what is going on with the Bitcoin price? We've dipped below 100K. Are we officially in a bear market? Have we been in a bear market for a few months already? Or is this just a liquidity thing? Let's take a look and see what the data says. All right, so I wanted to start off here by just looking at the Bitcoin bull bear matrix. This is a collection of six metrics that I look at to try to understand if the current environment, both external and internal to Bitcoin, is conducive for Bitcoin price appreciation. Uh, so we'll just go through this pretty quickly. I did a whole video on it uh, previously. So if you want a bit of a deep dive, you can check that out. But let's go through this. The overall regime score is slightly bearish. So we're at negative uh, 0.16. This is a score that ranges from negative one ultra bearish to uh, to positive one, ultra bullish. So let's go through each of these these six metrics. Um, and this this score is a weighted average of these six metrics. Okay, so stock market momentum. Uh, we're still in a risk on environment, so um, that that tends to be good for Bitcoin. Risk on Bitcoin is still traded like a risk asset. So stocks go up. Uh, that tends to be pretty good for Bitcoin. So that's still still looking good. The MVRV, this is the uh, market cap of Bitcoin divided by the on-chain cost basis. And I'm looking at that um, over a five-year window. So it's a five-year Z-score that I'm computing. And the value we're getting is negative uh, 0.37, which means we're essentially 0.37 standard deviations below the five-year mean. So definitely on a bit of a downtrend. Uh, that's not great, but we're also not that deviated from the five-year mean, so it's still sort of in the fair value territory. Uh, but if this were to go down a bit more, we would be sort of getting into that bearish territory. All right, uh, and the next thing we're looking at is the power law. So we're looking at uh, the power law oscillator, actually, which is looking at how far Bitcoin has deviated from its long-term power law trend uh, with respect to its historical price action. So right now we're at the 47th percentile, uh, still in the sort of fair value range, so pretty neutral, uh, but definitely trending lower. Last time I looked at this, we were up above 50. Um, so that is something that we're going to want to keep an eye on. Okay, next is real yields. Uh, nothing much has changed there, still above 1%, which is pretty neutral for Bitcoin. Uh, then we look at net liquidity. Uh, we're still at a moderate contraction. And that's giving a, you know, a fairly bearish score. So Bitcoin tends to do quite well when liquidity is rising and currently the opposite is happening. So we'll take a deeper look at that in a moment. Um, and then sentiment, this is by far the most bearish indicator right now that we have. This is the, the uh, crypto fear and greed index, and it's in extreme fear territory. Uh, so it's giving a score of 10 out of 100, which is incredibly low. Uh, so as you can see, the model is giving us a very, very bearish score there. Uh, and this sentiment score takes into account a number of different things, including like social media sentiment, as well as Bitcoin dominance and a few other metrics. That's why I like it. And it tends to be a pretty good gauge of kind of how we're doing. And historically, when, you know, sentiment is really, really bad like this, uh, th these tend to sometimes even signal bottoms or like good buying opportunities. This time I feel like it's a bit different because the sentiment is terrible, but the other indicators aren't flashing red, at least yet. Yeah, in other words, I think if we were in extreme fear, if you just saw this, you would kind of expect everything else to be flashing red, uh, but it's not really. So, so that's quite interesting, uh, but let's carry on here. So let's quickly take a look at the power law model. This is Bitcoin's long-term price trend, this red line. And um, I've also put the halving dates here so you can see, get some kind of context into Bitcoin's cyclical behavior. And um, yeah, I've pointed this out in previous videos, but the, the main kind of difference in this cycle so far is that we've had a lot less volatility. You can see in, in the, after the first halving, you know, we went up a lot and uh, we really overextended above this long-term mean. And then we came down quite far below it. Same thing here, far above. Uh, then we came down here into a bear market. Same thing after the third halving. And the fourth halving so far, we haven't really had that big uptrend that we have had in previous cycles. We've kind of just been on the trend and volatility has been really low. So that's uh, something that's been quite different this cycle. But I will also say right now, everybody's so bearish about the price 
But if you look at it on this log chart, you can hardly even notice the dip, right? We've had these big drawdowns where we've gone way below the power law mean. And if you compare that to now, you can't even really notice the current dip. We are below the mean. Uh, the mean is showing around 112, 113,000, and we're currently at 90, 94, 95,000. But again, on this log chart, it's hard to even to even notice that. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the power law oscillator. Um, and just a quick reminder, what this is, is it's a percentile ranking. And what it's showing is how far Bitcoin has deviated from that power law mean um, and uh, with respect to its historical price action. So I've kind of labeled the different zones here. Just as a quick refresher, like when we get up into this red zone, that's kind of the bubble zone. We've extended so far above that long-term mean that we're we're uh, bound to come crashing down. And we, we tend to do that, right? We come crashing down in, into the undervalued zone. And it's at that point where we've gone so far below the um, the power law trend that we you know we tend to come back up again, and this is just a good way to kind of visualize the cyclical behavior that the Bitcoin price has. We can put the trend line on here to see that a little bit better. And what this model is showing us currently is that we're we're down here. We're still in the green zone, but we're at the bottom of the green zone. So the green zone I've I've dubbed the neutral zone, but we're getting towards the bottom of the green zone. And we're kind of trending towards this light blue zone here, uh, which I've called the accumulation zone. Um, I probably should come up with a better name for that. <laughs> but uh, what that's referring to is like when we drop down into the undervalued territory, we tend to come back up, accumulate until we get into the green zone and above. But currently, we, we're, you can see we're on this downtrend, right? And it looks like we're, we might drop down into this accumulation zone, which would be below the 40th percentile. Uh, but currently we're still in the neutral zone. But another interesting thing that this model shows is that we actually topped some time ago. Um, if you look at you know how Bitcoin has deviated from its power law trend. So in, in previous cycles, um, we've always got up here into the bubble zone and then we've come crashing way down into the undervalued zone. We've kind of oscillated around. Uh, this time we didn't get up into the bubble zone, so we didn't get up that far above the power law trend. Uh, this was was about the furthest we got extended, and this was sort of late December 2024, uh, early January 2025. And that kind of coincides with this cyclical trend that we see in Bitcoin. Um, and that and this cyclical trend would be telling us that that was the top. And that now, you know, we're kind of going into a bear market. And I think this is really interesting because the actual price top in Bitcoin was sometime after this, right? Uh, but what some people have pointed out is that, um, that it looks like the top happened later when you're looking at Bitcoin's US dollar price. But if you look at Bitcoin over gold, it actually lines up almost exactly with this model to show that the Bitcoin over gold, uh, Bitcoin price in gold actually topped at the exact same time as we topped here, um, which is showing you know, Bitcoin's extension compared to its power law mean. So I find that really interesting. And I'm gonna have a look at that um, in a second. But one thing, uh, one thing I just wanted to mention here is that you know, if this cyclical uh, behavior is to hold, then we are kind of in a bear market um, and we are going to probably keep trending lower until eventually things reverse and uh, and we come back up. Okay, so this chart is showing Bitcoin priced in gold. And as, as I was saying, if you look at this chart, you can see the top actually occurred here. And this lines up, this is sort of late December, early January, um, late December, 2024, early January, 2025. And this lines up exactly with the power law oscillator model that we were just looking at um, previously. So that's really interesting. So both of these are telling us that actually Bitcoin's already topped and we're now sort of entering the sort of bearish part of the cycle. Price is sort of uh, declining a bit. And as you can see, Bitcoin gold ratio is here. This is roughly where we hit in, um, what is this, September 2024, right? So. 
So it's not great. Uh, gold has been kind of kicking Bitcoin's ass so far this year, but that doesn't mean uh, that's going to continue uh, because if we put this chart back, so let me, uh, let's go back to 2010 on this chart and get more of a long-term outlook here. Uh, what you can see, <laughs> what you can see is the long-term trend is that Bitcoin is um, strengthening against gold. It's had a lot of volatility, right? As we know, Bitcoin's volatile. Um, but the long-term trend is that Bitcoin is strengthening against gold. And I expect that to continue. But yeah, we're definitely on a downtrend at the moment. Um, so we'll have to see kind of how low we get. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to look at quickly is liquidity. Um, so let me scroll up to this chart. This is the Federal Reserve in the US, their balance sheet in blue. And then we've got the Bitcoin price in red. And uh, just to reiterate, Bitcoin tends to be very sensitive to liquidity. You can see, for example, when the Fed printed a ton of money in COVID, during COVID, um, and their balance sheet just spiked up here. You can see some weeks after that, Bitcoin also just went parabolic here. So Bitcoin tends to be very sensitive to liquidity. This isn't the best measure of liquidity. It's better to look at global liquidity, uh, but that is quite hard to, to calculate. Uh, so I'm just using this as a proxy. But uh, another thing to note is we went through a period here, you can see from sort of early 2022, the Fed's balance sheet has been shrinking and yet the Bitcoin price actually has been climbing ever since then, um, which is obviously, you know, a good sign. The other thing that's perhaps more interesting to look at is net liquidity. So this is the Federal Reserve's balance sheet minus the Treasury General account minus the reverse repo, uh, which are two kind of liquidity stores. So looking at that, you can see net liquidity has kind of chopped around here for a good while. And then only recently, you can see at the end of this chart, it's it's dipped down. So let me um, adjust the chart so we can see this a bit better. Okay, there we go. So you can see liquidity, net liquidity has chopped around sort of sideways for a long time. And then recently, um, starting about August this year, it began to decline. Um, and you can see sometime after that, the Bitcoin price also uh, took a tumble. Um, and now we're at the point where it seems like maybe things are turning around a little bit. Maybe liquidity has bottomed now that the, you know, the US government is, is operating again. Um, perhaps we'll see this start to reverse a bit and perhaps that will offer some support to the Bitcoin price. Um, and if it does, you know, it could be, uh, it could, could signal some kind of bottom, but I know some analysts, uh, I think Arthur Hayes is somebody who has been saying, now is actually a good time to accumulate uh, because, you know, going into next year, it looks like liquidity is going to be injected back into the system. And, um, you know, that could be that could be really bullish for Bitcoin. But again, um, I have no idea. Uh, none of us really know, uh, but it's an interesting indicator to keep an eye on. That's for sure. OK, lastly, I just wanted to look at one of the interesting technical indicators that I've heard a lot about uh, recently, which is the so-called death cross. So uh, supposedly a death cross is where the 50 day moving average moves below the 200 day moving average. And that's quite a bearish uh, indicator. So you can see this is a Bitcoin price here in gray and the 200 moving day average is here in, in red. And you can see we dip below the 200 day um, in April where we had the tariff announcements. We came back up and we've now dipped below again. And if I put the 50 day moving average on here too, uh, you can see the two are about to cross, right? So they're more or less touching at the moment. You can see we're, we're like marginally above the 200 day as I'm recording this, uh, but the 50 day moving average is just about to cross that 200 day moving average, which again is, is uh, known as a, you know, quite a bearish, a bearish signal. Uh, but that has happened before, you know, many times in the past, uh, you can see here, end of 2024, that happened. Um, in April, that happened as well. We came straight back up. So this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to go a lot lower, but it's definitely another kind of bearish sign that it's very possible that the Bitcoin price continues uh, to, to move lower. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, that's where we currently are. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe so you can follow along with the analyses. So again, I'm not an investment professional or a macro analyst or anything like that. 
Um, I'm just somebody who finds Bitcoin very interesting and I enjoy looking at the data. So if you enjoy that too, please do subscribe and follow along.